Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel, Adam and Orange, where I build 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today on the table, another gift or, or sample or however you want to call it from Metal Earth, they've given me this model to build and review. I have another armor model, this time horse armor. Very cool. They gave this to me along with the Chinese Ming armor that I've already assembled, so I'm going to jump into this next. I just had to do the main armor first because it looks amazing, but this is pretty cool itself and just reading off the back because I honestly don't know a lot about armor. During the late Middle Ages, as armored protection for knights became more effective, their mounts became targets. Barding was developed in response to this vulnerability. The armor consisted mainly of plate armor and hardened leather. So, you know, what good is a knight riding in the battle if you shoot his horse and it falls down? So we've got armor to help protect them, and well, I've got a sample of that armor right here. Let's open this up. If we look at the gauge on the back, it looks like it's slightly less than medium, so by this it should not be as tough or as difficult as the Chinese Ming armor, and that is kind of a little bit of relief. That Ming armor was, or that Chinese armor was a bit challenging, but worth it. Let's see if this is worth the small or great amount of challenge it will present. Let's open it up. Go to the table, see what's inside. Horse armor. What's inside? Probably our usual. Instructions. And two metal sheets. Set this to the side for a moment. Let's take a quick peek at the instruction sheet. Looks like there's just one piece of paper here. I can get it to cooperate and open. One paper, front and back, newer style instructions. And I'll position this to page one. I'll go over this very quickly. So a lot of people watching this video, I'm assuming, have built these models before and have some idea what's going on. But if you're you're new to building these models, I'll go over this rather quickly. So is There's a lot to it and there's not. You start off with page one with your Metal Earth logo, a line drawing of the completed model, and one of the sheets. You've got a 360 view, you've got a QR code you can scan or a website to go to to see a 360 model for reference. Down below that we have a sample part with a notation about insertion holes, insertion tabs and fold lines. Insertion tabs go in insertion holes, not necessarily on the same part. And fold lines are pre-scored areas where you bend parts. you got the legend, the E is normally pointing at an engraved side or section of a part. Any usually points at a non-engraved side or section. Although sometimes that can be confusing. The engraving may be there, but it may be fold lines or or some other detailing. Not the detailing that's supposed to show up. So that can get a little confusing. They've gotten better about making that clearer lately. But you've got a tension point. Usually that's pointing at something to make sure telling you to make sure you line things up a particular way usually. Sometimes there's notation to go with it, but not very often. Blue circle beside a connection point means to insert a tab, fold it 90 degrees, green triangle means to insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees, and some assembly tips and tools that you can use. We'll talk about the tools that I use here in a second. At the bottom of this page, you have a line drawing of the sheets that come with the model, and I'll grab one as a reference, as a sample. I've grabbed this sheet, it's pointing at all the part numbers so that you can find the parts in the assembly flowchart and put the thing together. I noticed that some of them are red, which I'm not really sure why that is. I've seen that on rare occasion before, but it was because there were duplicate numbers, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. No, yeah, they are. There's a red one and a black one, so... For whatever reason, they've decided to duplicate some of the numbers for different areas. And also, you'll notice that some of these parts are colored in where a lot of them aren't. The ones that are colored in are the same part. So, for instance, number three here is this kind of aquaish, bluish, teal color. And there's several of them. So these parts, they're the same part and they're used in several different places. These two parts are purple. One of them is labeled two. They're both number two. If we slide over to page two, we start the assembly flow chart starting with part one and two. Part one folds up into this shape. Part two goes underneath and connects there and you twist the tabs to secure it because of the green triangle. Slide over here, this is what it should look like. Part three, 
one part three, actually four, part three times four. So you get four part threes, fold them in half like that, and add them around the side. And you should end up with that. And this, you do this twice. So you end up getting one part, two part ones, two part twos, and eight part fours to end up with this. Do it twice. It's labeled A later on here is A adding to this part. And that's the gist of how it goes. You follow the arrows, folding and shaping and completing all the assemblies and sub-assemblies. Flip over to page, to the, the inside or the back of page three. Follow that down, page four. Once you get to the bottom, you're finished with your model. Let's take a moment to talk about tools. This is a very basic set of tools that I use in pretty much every build. I've got a very standard set of tweezers that I use very frequently. I've got some precision tweezers, a, another flat set here, and a couple of pointed tweezers, one of which I've ground the tip down just a bit to make it a little flatter for grabbing tabs. I have clippers that I use to get the parts off of the sheets quickly and easily. It's better than bending and trying to break them off. And then a couple of different pliers, a flat nose set and a long needle nose plier set. They come in handy for bending in different situations. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. I'll talk a little bit about tools. I've got my basics to get me started, my tweezers, my pliers, and my clippers. I've got the sheets and instructions at the ready. Let's put this together. I'm using my newest prototype long bending tool. Previous versions were not printed with enough infill to effectively work. This one so far seems to be doing well. There are eight of these corner pieces to fold over. I won't show folding them all. Mind how you mount these two poles. I didn't catch it until it was too late, but they need to be mounted so that the tabs on the top are positioned so that they are parallel with the longer edge of part four. If you look at part five first, you'll see how to align the tabs. I didn't and had to undo and move the position.
Putting the saddle together involves a lot of folded over tabs, something that I normally would not care for, but in this situation it works out. I initially wanted to shape this part by hand but decided it would be best to get this general shape started with a dowel rod. This is probably one of the hardest parts to shape in this build. It really isn't that bad though. Get the basic shape so you can connect the tabs and bend them securely. Then you can fan the sides out and make it into more of the shape that it needs to be. And I say bend the tabs securely, which is not what I did at first. I should have bent the tabs in the other direction to make them hook and more secure. I realized this and changed the direction that they were bent in. And I bent the part the wrong way around. Building this section reminded me of the Iconics Dragon build.
I had trouble getting the last tab lined up. Then I realized the center tab was not actually in its slot. It was in a hole next to its proper slot. I finally managed to print a taper in the size I wanted and it helped to shape this part. It took me several minutes to get the tabs lined up in their slots between these two parts. I'm not sure why things didn't want to line up right away, but sometimes you just have to keep working at it.
The instructions have triangles by this connection indicating to twist the tabs. I wanted to go for a neater look, so I pinched and folded the tabs over instead. And I present to you the horse armor. Pretty cool looking stuff. There's not actually a horse under here. Uh, you probably weren't even thinking that, but it does almost look like there is one. I find it pretty neat and interesting that you basically have two stands and sort of a little stand under here holding the headpiece up. So this is a display model with the armor on. I mean, how else are you going to do it? Make a horse and put a little armor on it, but yeah I'm just babbling on this model this is the second of the armor series that I'm done and I'm certainly looking forward to doing them all but I'm doing this after doing the Chinese Ming armor now the Chinese Ming armor was quite a challenge more challenge than I expected I really enjoyed it this one was a lot simpler this one took me an hour and a half to put together so it really did not take that long it really was not very complicated it wasn't very difficult to build, 
but it kind of gives the illusion, in a sense, that it would be very difficult to build. Now, allow me to explain that comment. I say that because it is a layered model. It does have pieces on top of pieces on top of pieces, which is kind of the theme, especially the saddle with the pieces on top of pieces. That's kind of the theme with these armor, and that's kind of the way armor is. And this here is sort of pieces on top of pieces. And that can be rather intimidating, and there's a lot of tabs in here. And, and I have said many times before, I'm not fond of these type of tabs. They're tabs that are on the edge of a part. Here's a part, there's a tab here. You have to bend that tab right at an angle up against that edge, and they don't always want to bend that way. And that, that especially when you have parts that are sitting flat on top of other parts and you're trying to bend two tabs in, and if you don't bend them tight enough, they're not going to line up with those slots. And that bothers me when I have a tab situation like that. This model has tabs like that, where they're right on the edge of the metal, and you have to bend them nice and sharp. Well, actually, with this model, they're not flat pieces on top of other pieces. It's not quite the same. You don't have tabs on either side that have to be lined up just right. A lot of the tabs, do they're kind of around one edge and not opposite edges for the most part, with the exception of like the saddle pieces on, or the foot pieces on the side, you don't have to work as hard getting them bent nice and sharp, or at least I didn't have to. It came together a lot easier than any of the other models that I've done that have tabs along the edge. So I didn't mind it. Don't mind it if it comes together easily. I do mind it if you don't bend it quite right because they're not pre-creased and they're right on the edge. If you don't bend them quite right and they curve and they don't line up, then it's a real pain trying to get it straightened up and it can kind of warp and mess up the metal. This was not the case with this model. Everything bent fine, everything bent right over. Maybe there were some allowances in the gaps that other models don't have, so there was some room for error without it being a big problem, but it came together just fine. This model seemed to go fairly quickly, seemed to come together fairly quickly, and, and it was a little bit of a challenge, but a relaxing kind of, oh, that's not that hard, I'm enjoying this sort of challenge. So I did this as part of a break from building the great big Megatron, and really glad I chose this to do. Hour and a half later, I'm done. I have a really neat looking piece of armor that goes on a horse to go with my armor collection with the Ming armor and hopefully in the future with the European armor and the Japanese armor. So I can't wait to do the other two. This is on the opposite spectrum of the Chinese Ming armor. That one was very difficult, but fun difficult because there is a difference between very difficult but enjoyable and very difficult and why in the world is this so difficult it's not that much fun this was an easy easier model but still fun still rewarding and still very much worth it i'll leave it at that if you have any questions or comments as always feel free to leave them down below if you enjoy these build videos if you find them helpful helpful consider becoming a patreon supporter there will be a link at the very end of this video here in just a minute and there's also links in the description down below just a little bit goes a long way as always thank you for watching thank you for my current patreon and ko-fi supporters for the help that you've given me to allow me to come this far with these helpful build videos thank you for watching and keep on keeping on